Hello mate, welcome back. In this video we're going to look at making our skin textures look better. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. So you can see in this uh, half render preview here that the character has some interesting um, dints and uh, ruffles in her skin <clears throat> which I've added by using this technique. This is obviously not a perfect uh, situation because it looks a bit crap but that's just because I was playing around. So we are going to start again and we will see what we can come up with. So I'm going to delete everything in the scene and come out of iRay preview mode, go into texture shaded mode like so and then I'm just going to load my character back into the scene there we go now that I've got her in the scene what I need to do is export this mesh using the go Z tool into ZBrush so if you go ahead and do that now and I will see you over in there alright so here we are in ZBrush I've already drawn out my tool and I am about to start applying my textures to the face so the first thing that we obviously need to do is to frame up on the face itself. So I'm just going to zoom in and annoyingly that had to zoom in on that part of the anatomy, didn't it? Of course it did. So we will go ahead and close up on the face. This may take a moment because I've zoomed in quite a long way. I think that was a belly button we just passed. And uh, talk amongst yourselves while I get up there. Oh, there we go. There's the, uh, the cleavage. We're approaching the neck and we should be in croak appearing at the chin the neck there we go there's the chin there's the mouth right we don't need to be this zoomed in so i can just hold down control and zoom out a little bit and then hold down alt like so and as you can see i'm using a subdivided mesh already but what we need to do is we need to subdivide this mesh even more so that we can get the best possible texture so we'll click on our geometry tab we'll hit divide it's gone to 4.19 million quad polygons we're going to hit this again and we're going to hit this again. We want to be in the region of about 60, you know, over 60 million so that we've got really good fine detail. Now, I will not lie. If your PC is not up to scratch, you may struggle with this. However, so as we can see now, we've got a really nice smooth mesh with loads of polygons to play with. So this is exactly where we want to be. Now, I've got some lines here that I don't particularly want. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my draw size here I'm just going to hold down shift I'm going to smooth these out and it may need to make some adjustments just to get that smoothing effect in there but basically we just want to get rid of these wrinkles as best we can by using the smooth tool either way once we've done that we're in a situation where we need to find some skin alphas now you can find skin alphas on the internet really easy no problem whatsoever so what i would suggest is use google images go google image search and you just need to find some alphas for skin and there are paid products that you can use for that as well if you really wish to that i will leave up to you once you've got those alphas come back into zbrush and what you want to do is we want to use a alpha mask here and we're going to select some now i've already got some alpha masks in here as i'm sure you probably have once you've got your alpha loaded i would strongly advise that you change from dots to drag rect bring your z intensity down i would go for somewhere around between six and ten eight's not a bad place to be and then your draw size doesn't really matter because you're using the uh, drag rect and then you're going to want to zoom in quite a bit so we'll hold down our control key and we'll come in there and then as you can see you can actually drag out areas and add some texture in now you don't want to go too mad remember these are meant to be micro holes really small holes in the skin so don't go mental and start dragging them out using the paintbrush kind of tools or anything like that don't rush take your time get what you need to get uh, get the effect in there that you need to get in there obviously you don't necessarily have to go over the eyeballs but if if in this case you're only doing the face it doesn't really matter now i've deliberately made a mistake there so i'm going to z z z control z all of my moves 
and that should take a few seconds. So that we've got the ability to go back and undo because what I want to do here is I want to turn on symmetry. So bear with me for a few seconds while I undo all of my hard work here. And we're going to turn on symmetry by hitting the X key. Once we've got, I should be only a couple more to go. Then we should be, if I come down to here, we can see where we are at uh, in our undo. There we go, nice and smooth, cool. So we're going to hit X. And then what we'll do is actually rotate around so that we can see the nose and we can actually check that we've got symmetry on. And you'll be able to see there's two dots now instead of one which is great. So what we can do now is we can actually go ahead and without going too big, because remember this is a small texture. These are micro holes in the skin. This is a micro texture. We want to add as much detail into our skin texture as possible. So try not to go too mad and too big in one area. It's going to take you a while to do this. Believe me, there is no point rushing because you're going to be here a while no matter what you do. And you want to do it right. You don't want to be faffing around doing this and rushing it. If you're if you're in a situation where you're trying to create better uh, textures for your skin, then you have to be prepared. And as someone who uses Dash Studio, you should already be prepared for the fact that it's going to be a slow process, whatever you do. So just keep adding. Remember that this is not the the uh, the main texture. This is just our kind of base layer this is what we're putting down first but there's there's other things that we're going to put on top of it as well and we're just trying to add a nice kind of skin roughness to our model before we move on and add some of the scaly kind of effects and the pores and things like that this is just a micro texture to go on top of it so we'll keep on dragging this out and i will carry on doing this and i will see you once i've covered the entire face Okay, so now hopefully you'll have something that looks vaguely like this and um, you want to just keep on keep rotating around to make sure it's not too patchy. Um, if you're seeing any areas that look smooth compared to the areas around them, then be sure to sort of go around. This is only a foundation texture, but you really want to get every layer right so that when you get to do your larger textures, your bigger changes, that they are building on a similar foundation really just want to make sure that that's a nice smooth looking texture all around pretty much got that here so the next thing we need to do is change to another alpha mask which is going to add pause i've already found one and downloaded one but again in your case you're going to want to find one and import it the same way that i do like so
Okay, so I've got a reasonably good texture going. I would probably do more work on it um, if I were doing this for sort of a real world situation, but obviously this is purely just for demonstration purposes. So the last layer that we're going to apply is actually one that comes with ZBrush and that's this Alpha 60 texture, which looks like um, some streaks. Now, if you've adjusted your mid value, which I've had to do for one of my alphas, just remember to take it back here and then switch over to color spray on this one. And then I would bring the Z intensity down, keep the draw size quite small, and then zooming in. This is where things start to make sense. You don't want to zoom in so much that you can't see. And what we're actually doing in this case is we're actually subtracting. So we want to keep our Z intensity kind of fairly there we want to keep our draw size i don't know somewhere kind of in that region and then you're holding down alt and you're basically just dragging the skin texture out and if you find yourself going too big don't be afraid to bring it down a bit more and then you're basically just creating the lines of the skin and again if you need to keep coming down on your draw size don't be afraid to do that and you're basically dragging these lines in the direction that the skin moves and as you can see now, we're starting to develop quite a realistic looking skin texture there. Just remember the direction of the lines of the skin. So along the cheekbones, it's going to kind of create a loop almost under the eyes, petering off down towards the nasolabial fold here and down that way. And then as we can come up this way, remember holding down the Alt key and we can follow the lines of the skin around the cheekbones and this is going to create as a really solid texture and as you can see the realism is really starting to take shape now just remembering the shape of the face so if you need to zoom out at all to see where you are on the face then obviously you can do so and you can tweak and smooth as much as you need to obviously in some cases maybe you make a mistake so you want to change something, you can just hold down the shift key and smooth out the area that you've been working on and start again if you so wish. But once you've started getting your textures looking really realistic like this, that's when you're going to start wanting to think about exporting this as a bump map or a normal map in our case, what we're we going to do. So I'm just going to keep drawing over this and this is a very rough example. So. If yours looks better than mine, that's a good thing. I've kind of rushed for the sake of the tutorial purposes, but you should take as much time as you need to to get this really solid effect. Get that skin texture looking on point because the more realistic you have it looking, the better your renders are going to be. Again, remembering we've got symmetry on, so we don't have to mess around worrying about what's happening on the other side because everything we do on this side is also happening on the other side. And just remember the direction of the lines of the face. So the weight of the skin is now going to start stretching the skin down towards the cheek area. So we can just keep applying this in the downward direction and then running along the bottom of the cheekbone. There we go, and I'm pretty happy with this as a demonstration purposes. Like I say, that looks pretty damn realistic. So the final stage now is to export this as a normal map. And because we've used GoZ, all of the texture zones are the same as they would be on the Genesis model. So all you have to do is click on the top here where it says Z plugin. Then you're gonna go to the multi-map exporter and you're gonna select normal map. I've set my texture size to 4096 and my map border to 16. Make sure then that you come down into your um, export options. And sorry, I had a brain fart there. When you go into your export options, you want to make sure that A, you set your file names. So you click on that and you can choose where the files are going to be saved. And then you want to come down into normal map area here and check select tangent. This is very important. I would go up a couple of subdiv levels. I wouldn't go any higher than five, to be honest, but click on tangent, hit smooth UV and S normals, and then you're basically ready to go and you can hit create all maps. This will then give you the option of choosing a location and a 
a file name to choose from so go ahead and input that and then once you've hit OK it will start having a damn good think. So now that that's done what we can do is come back into DAS Studio where we've got our model waiting for us and we're going to just select the face texture with our surface selection brush and then where we've got our surface properties here we can see face what we're going to do is we're going to set our bump map to zero because we don't need it we're going to make sure our normal map is set to one and then we're going to choose the file that we've just created we're going to hit browse and then it'll come up with a dialog box and what we want to do is double click on the normal map for the face which is usually the first one in this case with genesis uh, models and then we also want to do the same for the lips in case we have um, created a lip texture. I haven't really done any work on the lips, so I'm just going to leave it the same. Then we're going to unselect the surface selection tool, use our move tool, and then we can go into NVIDIA iRay preview mode and see what our skin texture looks like. Now I'm expecting mine to look pretty bad simply because I didn't really put that much time and energy into creating the texture. And as you can see now, we've got a nice skin texture there. Could be improved, but again, if I were doing this for the real, then I would make sure that I spend a little bit more time on it. But it looks pretty good, all things considered. You can see the pores, you give it a chance to load in. You can see the pores there. And we've got a really nice looking texture overall. Thanks for watching that, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, I'll speak to you later, guys. Bye-bye.